I want to turn to the story in Longford GA that's been bubbling away now. It turns out for months, but ultimately has hit the uh, public consciousness over the last three weeks as the county champions, Kilo Young Emmets, were banned for 48 weeks. And as a result, every member of the club is banned from all GA activity for 48 weeks. Um, Mickey Quinn joins us this morning. He's a member of the Kilo Young Emmets Club and, of course, uh, an intercounty footballer and a friend of the show at this stage. Mickey, how are you? Good, Jar. Yourself? I'm good. I, I mean, look, we are not involved in this story, and so therefore it just seems like it's an intractable bit of a nightmare for everybody involved. Um, I can only imagine what it's actually like to be at the centre of it, where your very existence as a member of a GA club that allows you to do the thing that you've given so much of your time to do so is, is at risk for the next 48 weeks. Um, what is the very latest situation, Mickey? Um, yeah, this has rumbled on um, from an under-16 game where uh, allegedly there was a red card overturned or a match report changed to uh, from a red card to two yellow cards and as a result of uh, some pressure being put, put on externally. Um, and as a result of that, our club uh, didn't play an under-16 final because there was a here and ongoing. Um, and from that, a 750 euro fine was given out by the county board and between the hearings ongoing and lockdown coming in, uh, the fine wasn't paid and a 48-week ban was imposed on the club. Um, that's the probably the short, shortened version. There's probably lots uh, in between along the way because this has rumbled on. That game was it's 12 months and it was September last year that this is all rumbled on from. So it's, it's dragging on massively and we're... At, at a crossroads now where we're, we have 48 weeks of a ban and it just it's just a real kick in the teeth for a club after coming out of lockdown, spending four months in lockdown, in isolation, um, and it just goes completely against what the GAA ethos is about, about community and, and volunteer, volunteering and, and being part of the community. Um, we're traditional, a traditional Irish GAA club, uh, two pubs, a church and a GA pitch in our community and you can only imagine how important the GA is for the likes of Kilo um, at, at this time and especially the way things have been for the last number of months. So again, I, I was completely unaware that a 48 week ban is actually a 48 week ban on all GA activities. So if you have any referees in the club, they can't go and referee. If you have stewards, you can't steward at uh, county games. Is that correct? Yeah, at the moment we have we have five referees that are members of the club. They're not allowed to officiate any games. Um, we have potentially we have two or three guys going off to college that have uh, potential scholarships, GA scholarships lined up that they look like they could be in jeopardy too. Um, we have five members um, on the Longford Intercounty team, uh, the senior team that looks like that's not going to happen. We won't be able to. We won't be able to play inter-county for the next 48 weeks and then we've also you know like myself i'm a teacher here in st mel's college in Longford, and i'm not sure if i'm going to be able to to coach a, a team whenever we're back uh, playing football here in the school and um, on top of other members that can officiate and um, other members that are involved in in coaching um in, in different aspects of the club or, or other clubs around Longford and other counties that they can't be it can't be on the line for games and it's it's just it's a real it just seems absurd and ridiculous that the, the punishment doesn't fit the crime. Well sorry this is about an under 16 game and a 750 euro fine and all of a sudden we're talking about potential for kids scholarships going to college being stopped. Essentially, yes, um, and I suppose that's the thing that um, probably sitting on our hands the last while that it's it, you know okay let's let's see the process let's let's let it take place and hopefully we we'll get to the end of it but this is dragged out for so long now um, and you talk about mental health and well being and how kids nowadays with the dropout rate um, from under sixteens on it's so high in GA and you're giving something like this to your own club, like it's, it's detrimental to our club, to be honest, that this could could definitely uh, put serious pressure under a club like ourselves. What's your own instinct? I mean, so, I mean people will be familiar with your story. You went to Australia, you came back, you, you play inter-county football, you keep playing inter-county football. 
even though it's, you know, the Leinster Championship is a difficult thing for any team that isn't Dublin. Uh, but you keep showing up year in, year out, and you're obviously centrally involved in, in the uh, storied um, academy that is the, the school that you teach in, and, and you keep going to the school. Will you play for Longford again if this band comes in? Well, personally, like, you know, it's a, it, it just feels ridiculous now that, you know, 10 years, you give 10 years of a, a career to to your club and your county. And and to be honest, you look across the board that you're spending more time with your county than your club um, the last number of years. But your question and everything that you've done for the last 10 years that, you know, I've, I've given up this, I've missed weddings, I've, you know, even at the stage now where, wife's due in the start of October and you're talking about planning around different bits and pieces with uh, an inter-county championship starting up and running in October and you're thinking to yourself well, what's it all about um, so I'm, like that's just from my personal side of things there's definitely other people in similar positions that um, in the club that have given so much and to be thrown back in our face like that it, it just it doesn't seem it doesn't fit what the GA is about so you would you consider your own future in the aftermath of this that we might have seen the end of you in a Longford jersey? Yeah, that's definitely something that has gone through my mind the last three, four weeks that um, that could be it for me. I find it very hard to love putting on the blue and gold of Longford, um, but it's something that's there now that I'm not sure that uh, it's something that I'd be willing to that the older you get, the harder it's going to be. And with this, it surely, it surely is something that uh, it makes you question it. So, from a, a legal, technical, bureaucratic perspective, this has gone all the way to the, the the DRA. Is that is that hearing today or tomorrow? As far as I know, it's this week. Um, I don't know have the club got a date or a time for that yet. But as far as I know, it's to happen this week. Um, so, we're just sitting, waiting, hoping that. Uh, sense prevails and, and we get to the bottom of this and can actually do what probably the, the lockdown imposed on us at the beginning and that that sense of joy and camaraderie that, that comes with being that lockdown being lifted that we can actually go out and express ourselves and just play football and, and play for the right reasons that you're playing for for your family and your friends and your community that that's something that's taken away from you um, and taken out of your control with the lockdown and then with this afterwards, it just really, it, it really has been a hammer blow to, to our community. It's, uh, look, local disputes are always probably the most keenly felt, but it, it seems as if um, the, the GA centrally have had, I think Park Duffy was involved in, in mediation. There is no better person to understand exactly how the GA functions and to understand ways for this to be navigated out. But even that was unsuccessful, I think. Is that correct? As far as I know, that, um, that, that finished up there was a mediation process and there's a Leinster hearings committee and then uh, we're at the stage now where it's at the DRA and um, so you know I'm probably at the end of the day I'm, I'm a member and I'm a player um, and that side of things is something that I don't know the ins and outs and um, but when when you're turning up to go training and you want to go training um, and this this is in the background there where um, you're not sure what's happening um, like it, it feels like we're going back to square one where you, you're not able to train um, and you're just sitting waiting for, for that, that call that, you know, that you're able to go now Are you surprised given everything you know and how long you've been involved in, in the inter-county set up that a local dispute can become so toxic and so poisonous um, I wouldn't say surprised but I pro probably Surprised at the length that this has gone on. Um, something like this could definitely um, be swept under the rug or pushed aside very quickly. Um, and that's probably something that's really been disappointed with with Lamford, that there's been so much good work done um, from coaching to, to other bits and pieces throughout the years. Um, but it's always one step forward, two steps back. And, and this kind of shows that what's holding back the the counties like Longford, um, that it, it just you know you don't see it happening um, in, in other counties, and and then you're wondering why the gap is getting bigger and bigger um, when there's so, so, such good things happening, and then all of a sudden you're talking about uh, one of the the top clubs in the county been taken out of from minor right up to senior. That 
you know, essentially all those players that might have uh, contributed to county teams or county coaching um, aren't able to, to do that for the next 48 weeks. But I, I think the point you made about, like, uh, the, the general sense of belonging that people are going to have. Like, if, if I was uh, doing my leaving cert or if I was heading in to, to get a, um, any kind of scholarship to help me with the expenses of going to college and all of a sudden I'm not allowed because of a dispute about an under-16 game a couple of seasons back, uh, I'm not really sure that I'd be willing to spend my time volunteering for this organisation or to, to be a part of this organisation that doesn't really take my and my clubs and my community's interests at heart for, for the sake of 750 quid. I understand rules are important, but like at some point you go, okay, this does seem like it's a little bit out of kilter here. Something has happened along the way and we all need to calm down, step back. Maybe, maybe somebody will pay the fine. I don't know if even on a point of principle if the fine's gonna get paid, but whatever it is at this stage, like, let's yeah. all move on. This is it. Like we, we have a young guy in the club um, who's playing soccer with Shamrock Rovers. Um, great potential, um, and you know he's he's up and down to Shamrock Rovers, and it's great to see. Um, and you'd never stop someone from trying a different sport or that. But it's gone to the stage now where he he can actually play for his own club and can actually play Gaelic football. So I was like, of course he's going to go off playing soccer and look at that a different road when he sees something like this going going on. And you're you're just thinking to yourself, well, do you know what? <laughs> you're at the right one. You're you're at right age that if you want to go in a different direction and try a different sport, what more do you want? You're after been suspended from playing forty eight weeks in in another sport that you love, and um, it's making the choice for you. Well, you're on mute there. We've, we've been doing this a long time now. <laughs> Here we go. Can you hear me now, Mickey? We can now, yeah. I there can, yeah. Uh, Mickey, I was just going to ask, in terms of that relationship between Emmett O'Colo and the Longford County Board, you know, given all this has gone through between you know, the initial few months, then that mediation, then the Leinster Council meeting earlier this month in Port Leash, now the DRA, is there going to be a massive damage done between the club and the county board for the foreseeable future now? Potentially, um, but I... I... Look, it's, it's probably speculation and hearsay. I don't know the full ins and outs. Like, this is probably from my point of view and what I know. Um, and I mightn't have the full butts and bolts and nuts to it all. But, like, it definitely has. Um, it has until this stage. And it just seems like no matter what you do, um, there seems to be a roadblock put up to, to stop stop ourselves from, from competing. Goes to appeal after appeal after appeal. And, and, from from my side of things, it, it kind of looks like, geez, Kilo must be wrong here. That um, you know, it's gone from one level to the next, and and that's probably the the public perception. But when when you read into it and and find out the more facts and and that behind it, um, it's beggar's belief that this is still going on. And there's a disruption to the Longford Championship and all this too, while these appeals are going through. At the moment, we have one group game left to play, um, and there was two. Uh, the quarter final draw was made, but we were kept separate um, because of this here and still going on and a forty-eight week ban. And um, so they restructured the draw to to have uh, team one and team two from our group, depending on what happens with ourselves and the DRA. Um, so there's two quarterfinals going ahead this weekend and the other two will be on hold until we know what's happening. And it, it's just, uh, it's ironic that it's gone to a stage where, uh, you know, there's a game being held up as a result of a hearing, which in in sense, that's what the under-16, what happened in the first place, that a game wasn't played as, as a result of a, a hearing um, not taking place. Uh, Which is like incredibly disruptive when you consider inter-county training is coming back now in a few weeks' time, September 14th. Uh, this could potentially slow down two quarterfinals because if you were to be reinstated, you still have that group game to complete. And that probably puts pressure on actually getting the championship finished before inter-county, I'd imagine, if you're put back in. Yeah. So, yeah, look, it's the, it's, to be honest, it's just a mess now at this stage and all anyone wants to do at this stage in the year is just play ball. Um, you know, we, we played one championship game since lockdown was lifted and that's been it. And guys chomping at the bit to play and uh, we're just sitting. And 
it's gone to the stage now where it's not just affecting our own club that it quite potentially could affect way more clubs. Yeah, the contagion has started. Mickey, great to talk to you. Uh, hopefully we get to see you on a field sooner rather than later and um, some kind of natural justice will prevail. But thanks very much for joining us this morning. And just thanks to clarify, much. we did, of course, ask the uh, Longford County Board for some comment, but uh, they have as yet uh, made themselves unavailable to either come on the show or given us any um, specific response to any of the queries that we had yesterday. And uh, we'll follow the story of Emmett O'Glow's 48-week ban for the non-payment of a 750 euro fine issued after they refused to take part in a county final because it was their belief uh, that um, somehow a player would have been ineligible from the opposition and that that had not been investigated properly in the first place. That was uh, their side of the story. We'd love to hear the other side of the story and the details of it. Apparently there are some legal letters that have been read out at various county board meetings around the uh, issuance of that red card, but ultimately the notion that a red card in an under-16 game is going to result in potentially some people losing their scholarships is absolutely ludicrous. So hopefully at some point sense will prevail.